My name is Meg, I'm from Red of the Wellness Century. Really looking forward to sharing with you guys today for our stretch and mobility. Um, so all you're going to need today for this practice um, is a space on the floor at home. Um, and if you've got a cushion with you, grab that. If you don't, that's okay. If you have any furry friends with you at home, feel free to let them crawl around the floor with you as well. They're always fun to have around. Um, I said, I'm Meg, I've met some of you before. Thank you for taking the time out for yourselves. Um, and this is my passion to share longevity in, in movement and mobility um, so that we can all move better for our mind and also our body. So I'm gonna ask that we all start with some breath work. Um, today in our practice, we're gonna lie on our backs in a supine position and I'll get you to bend your knees so the soles of your feet are on the ground. So take your moment to arrive, um, allowing yourself to just come into a beautiful, comfortable position with the knees bent so you support your lower back and or you place your open hands on your rib cage. So whatever has happened before this moment and whatever may be happening after this moment is irrelevant. So being right here for this next 40 minutes of stretching mobility. Let's take a beautiful deep breath in and a long breath out and we're going to inhale for the count of four, three, two, one and pause. Full exhale for the count of four, three, two, one and pause. This time making it a little bigger, breathe in, fully expand the belly up, pause, and breathe out, and pause. I want you guys to continue with your breath, working four counts on the inhale, a slight pause at the top for three or four counts. And a slow exhale, drawing the belly button in towards the backbone for four counts. And then pausing with no air for four counts. So continuing now in your own breath. And this is called our diaphragmatic breath, allowing ourselves to really increase the capacity into our lungs and our breathing and more importantly to shift ourselves into our parasympathetic state. So again, whatever has gone on in our day it is completely irrelevant. Um, you're now right here and taking the opportunity to give back to you. So I want you to breathe in how you want to feel when you finish this stretch and mobility class. And I want you to exhale with the words, I choose to let go of. And I, I want you to let something go. It could be a conversation, it could be whatever, something really little. Do that two more times. Inhale the words, I choose to feel. So that might be calm, energized, it might be gratitude, it might be thankful, whatever. And then exhale, I choose to let go of and let go of something that is taking up some space. And I'll do that one more time. Make this your biggest breath in. So fully expand, inhale. Hold all the air in. And fully out. And hold. Take a few natural breaths here. So just breathing in. And breathing out. And we're going to bring the hands by the side of the body. We're going to start to do some breath and movement just with the arms. So we're going to inhale, bring the arms above the head. And then we're going to exhale, bring the arms back. I'm going to do this a few times. 
Breathing in, the arms come up. And breathing out, the arms come back. Three more times, inhale. And exhale. Breath in. And jump out. Breath in. And breath out. Now you can either choose to stay with this or we're going to add a little hip bridge in here. So press into the soles of the feet. Inhale, lift the hips, lift the arms. And exhale, slowly peel the spine back down one vertebrae at a time. So awareness through the spine. Inhale. And exhale. Three more times, really peeling the spine off. Breathe in. And breathe out, peel back down. Two more times, breath in, fully expand. Breath out, belly to spine, and start to stack the spine down. Last time through, full breath in. And full breath out. And just where you are, just slowly bringing one knee and then the other into your chest. If you are in living in a tight spine today, as in your back might be feeling uh, a little angry or rigid, I want you to keep your hands on your knees and just do little circles here. If the back is feeling quite well, you are more than welcome to bring the knees a little closer into the chest and just start to move around the spine. We'll take four or five circles, one direction, and then taking it back the other way for about, say, six or seven as well. So it's really nourishing and nurturing through that lumbar part of the spine, but also the back of the kidneys as well. So from this space, all we're going to do is take a moment, we're gonna actually come into a happy baby. Before we come up, um, and do a little bit of mobility and movement into stretching. So the knees are gonna go wide. Now you can lift up your hands and place your hands on the inside of your shins um, or the inside of your calves, flex your feet, and you can more than, um, you're more than welcome to stay here, pressing the spine down into the floor. Or if you would like a little bit more, you can reach up and catch the underside of your feet and just coming into a happy baby pose. And, I really invite you just to shut down your eyes. I know you're all at home, but just do the best you can here. So essentially we are opening the hips, coming into a squat, but without the pressure um, of putting into our knees as well. So this option is always available if we do visit a squat. And it's super important for us um, to make sure. Hey guys, can I just ask you to put your um, uh, cells on mute, please, if you haven't already. Thank you. Um, just allow yourselves to open your hips. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> We're going to spend about five to six more breaths here, flexing the feet, allowing the knees to open. And saying to close down your eyes, I'll see if I can also do it from my end as well. Just breathing deep into that space. Alrighty, there we go. Beautiful. All right, take one more full breath in. I've just been able to meet you all, guys. And then from this space of your uh, happy baby, we're gonna start to rock and roll all the way up to seated. So however you come up to seated is fine. Starting to rock and roll your body. And we're going to come up into a 90-90 position here. So I popped you all on mute as well, so you're, you guys are all good. So we're gonna take a seat uh, into our mats, um, and we're going to bring the right foot in front of the left quadricep. And I want you to take your time here, so we're coming into what's called that 90-90 shape. Um, and again, our hips are such an important one to work through. Um, especially if we are sitting, I know you guys working from home, um, it's a big one as well, um, to really help the nourishment into our hips. So 
I really invite that you use your hands as much as possible for this one. And we're going to lean back and then allow the legs to sweep and change direction. So we're leaning back and just allowing the, um, the knees to swivel side to side as we start to create um, a really nice segment and sequence into the hips, working through mobility here. So just allowing yourself to take the time out um, to really feel here. The feet stay hip distance apart and just do the best that you can. So I'm supporting myself with my hands as I'm leaning back and just um, rocking side to side. We're going to take about another six of these. If you're feeling a little bit funky today, you're welcome to bring your hands up off the ground and start to engage through the core. But if you find that you need the support of your hands, please do that. It's not about an aesthetic thing, it's definitely about how it feels in your body and we're trying to create some space into the hip and the sacral area. So what we're going to do from here is now add on a little bit of a stretch. So we're going to stay with that same movement, but we're going to add in a forward fold over the quad. So all we do is change direction with the feet, come into the 90-90 position, and then start to fold forward. So we inhale, come up, use the hands if you need, and then exhale, we fold forward. So we're gonna be here for a couple of minutes. So we're gonna inhale, come up, and then exhale, fold forward, just to your degree. Inhale, coming up, and exhale, folding forward. So really starting to move intuitively with your body. That's all we need to do. Too often we move so fast that we can't experience what's going on and what it is that we actually need in our body. So learning to move a little bit slower, a little bit more intuitively, but of course being completely okay with where we're at. Uh, there's no point coming into a stretch and going, God, I wish I was further forward than that. One, it doesn't get us anywhere, and two, we, we start to force and push, and just like nature, you know, there's that old saying that um, nothing in nature is hurry, yet everything is accomplished, and the same goes for us. If we strive too much, and if we push, or if we're, um, you know, that old saying, oh, we're pushing shit uphill, it's, maybe it's not the right time, and things come to us as they're ready. So we're gonna take five more rounds of this, and then we're gonna hold ourselves into a beautiful glute stretch and an opening into the hips. Really connecting with your breath here. You should be feeling really nice through your hips. This is one of my favorite things to do in the morning. Um, too often we just get up and go for it. So it's so nice to bring in this technique of juicing the body so we get our joints feeling really good to support us through the day. So we're going to bring the right foot in front of the left quad, just as we've been doing. And now we're going to actually fold forward over our shin. So if you have a cushion or a something uh, in front of you, you're welcome to rest your hands onto that or a yoga block. And we're going to take a big inhale, and this time we start to fold forward over the shin. If folding over the shin doesn't work for you, turn towards that right knee and fold over that side but we're trying to get an external rotation into the right hip and an internal rotation into the left hip. Right? Our hip joint is a ball and socket joint. It is most definitely not a hinge joint, but unfortunately with years and years of conditioning um, of sitting um, in chairs and couches and cars, it's being trained and conditioned to move like a hinge. And hence we have many problems and issues downstream from our hip joint, things like our knees not aligning, and then into the feet and the ankles as well. And the same goes for our feet. Our feet are most definitely not designed for shoes. So get out of your shoes as often as possible. Again, if we are experiencing problems into the hip, the knees and the lower back, there is most likely an issue going downstream with our feet of our muscles, the layer of muscle into our feet, we have four layers, um, which um, collapse because we put them in shoes and we forget to strengthen the muscles in our feet, which of course support us. 
So in these stretch um, and mobility classes, I will most definitely get you working into your feet and your hips so that we can keep longevity of the spine um, and the whole body as one. Take three more breaths as you are. So full breath in. Full breath out. And do that two more times. Big inhale. Big exhale. And last time, inhale. And exhale. We're going to slowly creep ourselves up here and taking a moment to just pause and we're just going to transition through to the other side. So we're going to bring that left foot now in front of the right quadricep. Um, and of course, you be in a position that works for you. If you need to sit on a cushion um, or if you need to adjust that back leg, you do so. And we're taking a, a moment here to just pause, and this might be enough for you. We want to get into now the glute muscle, the glute max specifically. So external rotation of the left hip and an internal rotation of the right. Take a full breath in, and as we exhale, we start to come forward over that left shin. At any point, as I said, this doesn't feel right for you. If there is any sharpness or tingling, so it's very difficult to um, when we're on, on Zoom or any video format such as YouTube or whatever it might be, it's really, really important to listen to your body. And, and this is the beauty of, of doing um, our teachings like this. You actually start to listen to you. So you will always be your best teacher, uh, none of us. Um, and when we learn and understand to listen to our bodies, we then can really tune into exactly what we need all the time. So we're going to spend eight more breaths here, starting to soften down your gaze, your head, and use your breath and your exhale to start to let go. We're going to take four more breaths here, everyone. So most definitely not holding like I would a yin yoga class, although we do have those coming up. Um, but just enough to get into the fascia and the connective tissue, which lies underneath the muscles. So about a minute and a half in these shapes. Take one more full breath in. And a full breath out. Beautiful, everyone. We're going to slowly come back up. And we're actually going to just take a moment to sit nice and tall and we're going to come onto our uh, hands and our knees into a tabletop position as we now start to get into the spine and we're also going to get into the feet while we're here. So if you haven't got bare feet on, that's not the best way to say that, if you're not in bare feet, <laughs> um, then I really invite you to take off your shoes so that you can actually start to spread your toes. So we're going to tuck the toes under so that we're starting to stretch the connective tissue and the fascia and the underside of our feet instead of um, being in shoes and I know at home um, hopefully you guys have a, more of an opportunity to do bare feet. We spread our fingers really wide like frog hands to support us and then the hands are going to go underneath our shoulders and we're going to just move through some cow cats with our toes tucked under. So we're going to take a full breath in and lift up the chin and the chest to your degree. So it's a posterior tilt. And then we're going to tuck the tailbone under, anterior tilt and round the spine. So the inhale draws the chin and the chest through. And the exhale rounds the spine like an angry cat. So we're going to do three more of these and then I'm going to let you guys free flow this for a little bit at home because we're... We're in a world where we can be very structured and rigid and it's really important to one, explore your own creativity, but two, get ourselves out of this linear movement um, and um, habitual movement that we do so much of. So for the next minute or two, I'm gonna let you move however you like here. So you can extend your arms out long 
I want you to now shut down your eyes and really not watch what's going on the screen. But I want you to move through your body. So you might be moving around laterally. You might even open an arm. You might explore coming back into a child's pose, untucking those toes. You might explore coming all the way through into a little bit of a back bend, so like an up dog or cobra. And just playing with different orientations of the body. You might take one hand off. You might even open up one shoulder. So being really, really soft and, and curious about where your body can go. So spending the next eight or so breaths here, just moving your spine in every single direction. Closing down your eyes, moving, breathing, rounding the spine, different orientation of the wrist maybe. Continue to breathe here as you move through anything that feels good for you. It'll be different on everyone. Explore about three more breaths, so wherever you are, just making any movements that feel nice. Eventually bring ourselves back up to tabletop position. While we're here, we're going to get into our hip flexors. If you're on a mat, you're welcome to fold over the mat um, if you're on a hard floor and support the back knee. If you are, are really tight into the hip flexors, so um, we've got our right leg forward and we're going to be stretching into the back hip flexor, um, please stay upright or use a wall to lean on. So you can actually put your hand against the wall if you need to. And we're actually going to make this a little bit dynamic into this stretch today. So we're going to start to drop our hips down just to your degree and we want to make sure that we're pushing into the sole of the right foot. If you have blocks or anything beside you, you're more than welcome to drop the left hand down or if it reaches the floor, easily go for that. Again, just reiterating, it's not about how far forward we go or how deep we go into this. If you are getting a stretch into your um, groin and your inner thigh, your hamstring on the right and also your hip flexor and psoas on the left, then you are exactly where you need to be. So we're going to do three PNF stretches here, or PNF holds, where we activate the stretch and then we let go. So I want you to just make sure that your right ankle is underneath your right knee joint. And then just keeping the stretch as is. When I say um, go or we're ready, we're going to push the right sole of the foot down into the ground like we're trying to dig a hole with that right foot. So we activate the stretch. So stay exactly as you are and we're going to count for 10 seconds and push the sole of the right foot down now. So pushing down for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 and release. You might have found a little bit more space. Um, it's not about that but just you may have found that you might have a little bit more release. So keeping it nice and gentle here, we've got two more of those activations. So round number two, here we go, push down with that right heel for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, release. Big breath in, big breath out. We have one more activation, pushing down with that right heel for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and release and let go for about 10 seconds and wherever you are is perfect. Some of you may like to roll onto the blade edge of the right foot. Take a full breath in and a full breath out, mindfully and slowly use the strength in your hands to push up and we're going to tiptoe the right foot all the way out to the right so it goes around the joint. 
and we bring the right knee left to the left knee and we're going to find ourselves in an infant's pose with the forehead resting onto two fists or bringing the forehead down to the floor. And I want you to take five breaths there just to pause. So taking a full breath in and a full breath out. So we're now going to, of course, work onto the other side. So setting yourself up always slowly, um, bringing the left foot forward. So these guys, of course, can hold a, a hell of a lot of tension and stress. There's two main areas in our bodies where we hold stress, of course, and I think we're very familiar with that. It's, of course, of course our hips and our lower back and our shoulders and our chest. So we're just coming into that place of a lunge. And again, it will look different on everyone. This is fine. You work with where you feel sensation, somewhere where you can stay, and then we're doing three activations. So bringing the right hand down to a floor or a prop, a water bottle is also good. We're going to do a 10 second activation into the left heel. So pushing down, we've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1, and soften. Full breath in. Full breath out. Activation number 2. Push down with that left heel for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, and one, and release. Again, it's not about coming down to the floor, just see if you have a little bit more space to breathe. Full breath in, full breath out, and last activation, setting it up, weight down through the heel for ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax for ten seconds here. Let go. Full breath in, full breath out. Slowly. Press into the strength of your hand and your arm, round your spine, tiptoe your left foot out to the side. And this time we'll find a child's pose. So bringing the knees wide, the toes don't have to touch. Sink your hips back over your heels and rest your forehead wherever it lands. Five deep breaths in. And matching it with five deep breaths out. Hopefully you're feeling quite nice in your body and also quite nice in your mind and relaxed. So we're actually going to make our way to standing. So there's always a couple of different ways to come to standing. Um, I know you guys do yoga um, uh, through the council, so more than welcome to press into your hands, tuck your toes, and we find a downward facing dog. We're going to do a little bit of hip movement here and we're going to massage our feet. So I mentioned the technique of juicing before, so it includes our toes. So I want you to place your gaze on your feet and I want you to massage the balls of your feet. And what you'll notice is your hips are going to move too. So, so slowly separate your toes, massage the balls of the feet, and you'll notice that you're getting this beautiful movement through the hips while you do this too. Straightening your arms, belly draws to thighs, and we're just going to be here for five, for four, Three, two, and one. Now start to tiptoe your feet towards your hands, bending your knees as much as you need, and we're going to find a forward fold. So those of you, if you have a tight back, please rest your elbows on your knees for support. If not, we're going to decompress our spine here for five breaths. 
Let the hands go. Bend the knees so that the belly touches the thighs. Full breath in. Full breath out. And do that four more times. Let yourself just dangle. Support yourself if you need. Give yourself permission to let something go here. We're going to take one more full breath in. And one more full breath out. Mindfully and slowly, chin to chest, belly to spine. Use your hands if you need. Stack your vertebrae one at a time as you slowly roll up to stand. Taking your time. We're going to do a little bit of work through the spine and of course, uh, opening into um, our, our shoulders. So with this next bit, slowly coming up to stand. Hope you guys are all feeling pretty good. Give me a thumbs up if you're feeling okay. Um, thank you. <laughs> so from this place, we're going to bring our feet hip distance apart. And so I know we're on a 40 minute timer. I think we've got eight minutes left to go. This is a technique that I have learned and been taught from my movement teachers um, called juicing. So we're going to get into the hips and we're going to do little hip circles here like um, we, I've got a fuller hoop is probably the best way to describe it. And I want you to be really mindful of your spine. So the whole hoop, the, um, the size of this hip rotation is completely up to you. I always start really little and slowly so that I can actually tune and listen to what is going on with my body. And again, this is uh, not my um, not my teachings. These are from my own teachers, but it helped my spine immensely. And it helps us become loose and less rigid and more supple. So you might find now that you might shut down your eyes and just really lose yourself in this movement of the hips. We're going to go one more this direction. And then we're going to take it back the other way. So I want you to start really little into the other direction. So just starting to move slowly. So whenever we change directions, we always want to um, make sure that we tune in and we listen to how it feels in our, in our bodies before we go any, any deeper into this and keep it really nice and slow. Let your hands come off your waist if you can and keep a really nice sense of lightness into your shoulders. So it's like we're stirring a pot with our hips. So slowly bring yourself back to center. And then from this place, we're actually going to stand on our right foot. If you need a wall behind you, please use your wall. We're going to soften the right knee. We really want to make sure that the standing leg, there is a softness into the right knee. And we're going to bring up the left leg. And we're going to just move around the hip joint. And again, you listen to you. This could be really little, right? So you're try we're trying to get this hip, uh, the right hip, moving in a three-dimensional pattern, right? Again, it can get so stuck here in a seated position, in a hinge joint, and it's just not a hinge joint. So we want to play with allowing the body to move forward. It will move to the side as the leg goes out. And we're just playing with moving your left leg and hip around the joint. So trying to create a little bit of movement and fluidity and keeping the rest of the body really, really soft, almost like a ragdoll. Just working to your degree. So. We're here for just 10 more seconds. Slowly come back up to stand. And just give your body a little bit of a shake out here. So just moving side to side. You might have felt your glutes get a little warm there too. So we'll shift that to the other side. Left leg grounds, bring up the right one. And then we're slowly going to start to create movement around the right hip. So you'll find that if you set your gaze onto something still in front of you, so try not to watch what I'm doing, just set your gaze onto the floor, you'll notice that your balance will improve significantly as well here. So we really connect to the muscles in the foot here as well by pressing about 60% of the pressure into the heel and 40% of the pressure into the ball of the foot, called the tripod of the foot. 
And if you do um, a few of my classes um, through these Zoom meetings, you'll notice I'll talk on that consistently. So 10 more seconds exploring the left, uh, the right hip joint. And then slowly bringing yourself back up to stand. Well done. From here, we're just going to shake that out again a little bit, so a little bit of movement through the body. You'll notice that if you guys have pets, they shake all the time under stress and tension and get rid of the energy. We need to shake too, it's really good for us. So we're going to just do some spinal rolls. So however this looks for you, let it feel really nice. We're going to soften the knees and we're going to try to ripple our spine in an articulation, including getting right up and into the neck. So our spines are meant to move. Um, but we do sometimes get into a habit of keeping them very stuck and very rigid. So I want you to let this feel really good in your body. Don't worry about what it looks like. Again, it's not about an aesthetic um, thing. It is honestly how, how it feels in your body. So slowly rippling and rolling that spine. Letting yourselves open up through your chest and your shoulders. Be loose here, enjoy the fluidity. Now that last one, slowly moving through the spine. Nice. So a couple of minutes left to go just before we come back down to a seat or our knees. We're just going to very gently move through our neck. So just a half circle, just over to the other shoulder and then chin to chest and draw back through. Let's take two more votes. And then last one. Beautiful. Bring yourself down to the ground. I'm going to be on my knees. We're going to just work into some breath and some chest opening before you go back to work. So from here, knees or seated position, we're going to inhale, open the chest. And we're going to exhale round the spine. Breathe in, sternum presses forward. Breathe out, round the spine. And I want you to shut down your eyes now. We're going to breathe in for four, three, two, one. And exhale round, four, belly to spine, three, two, one. Breathe in. Breathe out. So try to bring those shoulders away from the ears, the opposite of what we do at our desks and on our phones. Inhale. And exhale. We'll go two more of these. Breathing in. Breathing out. And last one. Breathing in. And breathing out. Bring your hands just to rest wherever you feel comfortable. And I want you to take a big breath in with the words, I feel. How is it you want to feel when you finish this practice? Breathe that in. I feel. As you breathe out, breathe out the words, I choose to let go of. Do that one more time. Breathe in. And breathe out, I choose to let go of. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, it was a pleasure to share. My name's Meg here at Redhead Wellness Century. Um, I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys again. Take it easy, enjoy the rest of your work day. Um, I hope you guys had a beautiful stretch and some time out. Uh, feel free to leave me any comments if you have any questions. I think that's pretty much our 40 minutes up before it's going to cut me out. How are you guys feeling? Give me a thumbs up if that felt okay. Amazing. Thank you so much, everyone. It was lovely to share with you today.